There you go. All right. Welcome to the Community Service Advisory Board meeting, November 6th, not 16th. It's the 11th, uh, 2024. Happy New Year to everyone. Um, call the meeting to order. Start off with introductions since we have a couple guests, but I think we should make that a regular thing, Emily, since we're live, so to speak. Uh, I'm Art Dillon, uh, current chair. I live on Black Point Road. Uh, Trish Brigham, current vice chair, um, and I live off of Pine Point Road. Ellen Coughlin Quinn, committee member, and I live in Pleasant Hill area. Oh, me too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Katie Foley, I'm a Scarborough citizen, former town council, and currently still the chair of the dog owners of Greater Scarborough Political Action Committee. Okay. Uh, Mike Slavin, I'm the chairman of the Coastal Waters and Harbor Committee, a special guest star, <laughs> special guest appearance. Yeah. Uh, Emily Loader, recording secretary, uh, Pleasant Hill. Roger Shabbat, me uh, member, and live in Higgins Beach. Alex Marshall, committee member, Pine Points. Awesome. Uh, talk to the director of community service. So we do have one uh, person attending on Zoom. Perfect. Well, welcome and thank you for attending. Um, Emily, you've got the attendance. Uh, move to item three, uh, approval of November's minutes. Any questions? We <laughs> should have a copy in the packet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Take a motion to approve. So moved. Thank you, Trish. Second. Second. Thank you, Emily. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. All right. Item number four will open up for citizens' comments. Hey, Rick. Right down here. Sorry, Alex. Hey, Rick. Uh, Katie or Mike, do you have anything you want to outside the agenda? Outside the agenda, I'd like to. I was just going to say it's pertaining to item seven, so I can hold my sounds good. Thoughts. All right, let and me just check Alan. online. Uh, Penny, you got your hand up there. Yes, thank you. So my name is Penny Whitney Astorian. I am a resident of Scarborough, and I am employed in the summer as a beach attendant for community services. And I wanted to take a few minutes. I've been listening to the past few meetings and I wanted to give the perspective with regard to a few things from a, from the staff viewpoint. I have, uh, I chatted with all of the staff that I worked with and we were very concerned about, first of all, about the $30 um, and the fees in general and the staff recommendations, which I gave to Steve Kramer, and I think he passed on to, to Todd, were that the staff recommendations were that the times uh, change and the rate change, that it would be $10 from 5.30 in the morning to 8 o'clock in the morning and $20 from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, <clears throat> I understand that the town would really like to get more people to get the passes. The $5 um, that we charge in first thing in the morning really is not enough money to encourage anybody to do that, even if they're there every day. Um, and the $30, the only people that it really disadvantaged were, were working families, that the only chance that they get to come to our beaches is on the weekends. And I know that there were several questions a couple of meetings ago about the number of turnarounds. And one of the members wanted to know if those were just people that were sick of waiting in line. Um, and consistently from my understanding and from my experience, um, the answer to that is no. They were people that waited in line sometimes as much as 45 minutes to get down to where they pay and then realized the cost and chose to turn around and leave. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I wanted to make sure that was understood is between Ferry Beach and Herd Park, which is Pine Point, um, 
there are probably between 30 and 50 cars every morning that are there before the attendant gets there. And we don't have any means of enforcing any payment. Um, that's not such an issue at Higgins Beach because the VIP uh, cop over there does a great job of parking enforcement and people know that if they're in there without paying that they're gonna get a ticket. Um, unfortunately, we don't have that same relationship at the other two beaches. And um, at the very end of the season, I started keeping track on the paperwork that I submitted about the number of cars that were in the parking lot um, when I arrived that had no proof of payment. And at Heard Park one morning, it was 27 cars. So we just, that's lost revenue. Um, we also made recommendations that I think you've chatted about, about being able to get your parking passes online. One of the other comments that we had was military people in the town of Scarborough get a lifetime military pass or veterans pass, I think it is. It would be really nice if those people were just offered a beach pass as well for free. Um, it would avoid some confusion. Sometimes they don't have the pass with them. Um, I know the older citizens, including myself, get our beach passes for free um, when we register our cars. So that would be a nice thing to have happen as well. And I'm happy to answer any questions if anybody has any. Can you clarify on the military veteran for any military veteran, whether they're a resident or not? No, resident. Just, just resident? Resident only, they can go in, they have to verify, they get a little pass. Well, they made that in their comment that we talked about a couple months ago in the sheet they submitted. Their recommendation as a staff was for them to bring their veterans pass into town hall and still get a free sticker. But at least so when cars are coming through, they don't have to question or be disrespectful to say, okay, you know, I served, please come on in. I don't have, just don't have my pass with me. They still get a free sticker. They just have to come in and show that pass to So that was the recommendation. If I remember that correctly, Penny. Yeah. How does it work now? Sorry, do they get some sticker? It just works for the lifetime or are they supposed to drive like the veteran's the license veteran, plate is supposed no, to? No, they get a, um, even if you're a veteran, you still have to come in and apply for a lifetime pass. And so they, they do the paperwork and they get a nice laminated card. They're just supposed to show the card when they come. Gotcha. But it doesn't always happen. And then sometimes it turns into a conversation like, you don't believe me, what am I doing? You know what I mean? So they would just come up ways to kind of re re reduce conflict. Great. So thanks, Penny. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, no others online? Nope. All right. We'll close the citizens' comment portion. And we'll go to item number five, uh, Coastal Waters and Harbor Committee, uh, parking at Pine Point. Uh, uh, Chair Mike Slavin? Slavin. Slavin. Close enough. That's how I know what it's, it's how a market is called. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and everybody should have a copy of that uh, working document you guys created when you have it well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, good. Uh, yeah, so so a little background. So the Coastal Waters and Harbor Committee uh, were charged with making recommendations related to the coastal harbors and waters. And it's an interesting uh, situation in that we've got uh, a couple of major stakeholder groups that we have to work with, which is the working waterfront people, all the clamors and commercial people, plus all the other people who just kind of do recreational type of stuff. So there's, so there's a lot going on. Uh, We've been talking about parking and the parking issue literally for years. And I'm sure everyone's pretty much aware of what goes on. And what goes on is that uh, often when the Heard Park parking lot fills up, in the areas around it fill up, people come over and they park at Pine Point. So then we have issues with not having enough spaces for the commercial people, the people who have paid for a pass to put their boat in and, and that kind of a thing. Plus, there's also the Stern restaurant there that's another stakeholder in the group. So what we've been doing over the past, literally, as I said, a couple of years, is trying to come up with some sort of a recommendation on coming up with a way to have a paid parking process. Or we started out with the Pine Point uh, parking lot, but in part of our discussion, and also in talking with Tom Hall, we've kind of expanded our scope of recommendation to cover the whole Pine Point area because it's all kind of interrelated. It's not just our parking lot. Um, so where we are right now is we're trying to put together a recommendation uh, to the town council as far as what should be done. So, and I didn't realize that you guys, so you, 
You have, has everyone seen copies of this kind of working draft thing? We yeah, have we had sent that along. Okay. Yeah, I'll, previously. Kind of, I'll kind of cover the highlights. Um, so one of the reasons we're doing this, well, it, it's a couple of reasons. We're well aware that there's infrastructure associated with you know, the harbor. There's the pedestrian pier, there's the commercial pier, there's just a, there's the boat launch, there's a lot of stuff going on. And um, when we talked about possibly charging people for parking, it's like, well, there are a couple of things we thought about. Theoretically, users should help support some of the infrastructure enhancements that are going to be happening. That's one thing. And also, one thing we learned in, in just kind of surveying what goes on in the area is that basically from the main New Hampshire line up through Portland and probably beyond that, there's really no place that people can park where they don't have to pay something. So we feel that, you know, paying for parking, it's it's something that probably should be happening. So we've been trying to come up with some recommendations um, in order to make this work. And um, we're trying to keep in mind all the different stakeholder groups, what they're, what the different stakeholder groups are interested in doing and that kind of a thing. And uh, so we're at the point where we're getting ready to make some recommendations. And one thing we've also learned in trying to discuss this whole thing is that this is one of the worst issues that I think I've ever seen in that there's so many different opinions so many different factions involved. We had we've had groups of citizens show up in uh, meetings that were just you know spirited meetings going forward. So there are going to be a lot of issues going forward. Our role is to be an advisory group and make a recommendation. And we finally decided that we can't really solve all of these issues. That what we probably need to do is you know we've done a lot of good work, package our work together, which we've done in the form of this recommendation document and really move it on to the town council where there will continue to be a spirited debate as far as what's going to happen um, and where they're going to have to deal with, with things like how much they're going to charge and, and what they're going to do, that, that kind of thing. I think where it involves community services is that um, we feel that parking should be looked at for the whole area. So Heard Park is part of this, Heard Park, the Heard Park overflow. <laughs> The, the marked spaces on the streets, everything should be kind of looked at as, as a paid parking kind of a thing. So that's one thing we thought about. Uh, we've also looked into um, different ways we can do this, and there are a lot of state-of-the-art solutions available now. Well, one of them that we looked at in detail was this company called Passport Parking, which I think they use in Portland and a few other places, where it's all just done, it, it's done online. There's a minimal capital investment needed uh, there's ways that they can trigger enforcement activities, that type of thing. So we're thinking that our recommendation is that we should be doing something like that. Are we going to recommend a specific vendor? Well, not necessarily, but we just think that that's the direction that should happen. We would leave it up to the town to do that. Uh, and, and what a, uh, a system like that would do was give us a lot of flexibility as far as how, how much we charge, when we charge. Tom Hall is also committed that uh, the town can handle the enforcement part of this. So that's one of the things we looked at. Uh, another really important thing that we've, we are working into our recommendation is that uh, as far as who gets who gets charged, um, anyone who has any kind of a permit, a boat launch permit, a commercial clamming permit, any of those other permit holders that use the parking lot right now shouldn't have to pay. And also anyone who has a beach pass shouldn't have to pay. Because part of the reason people park on the street and park in the in that lot is that the, the beach heard park parking lot fills up. So um, they shouldn't have to pay either. And um, so that's kind of where we're going with this. And um, I know you guys have probably talked about the herd park parking lot, how to deal with that. And I'm interested in your thoughts on whether you think this should all be put into one big parking topic or 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 what? Have you guys thought about this or discussed this at all? Or? Well, it's actually on our uh, agenda this evening. They were all assigned different communities to look at, right? And really, okay, kind of figure out what, where, and when, you know. And then, because again, it's, we've had numerous discussions about different topics. Yeah. See, and I didn't realize that you guys were going down that path in that much detail because I don't. I hate to volunteer to take ownership of this, but maybe we should take ownership of this just because the Pine Point, the Pine Point lot has a lot of unique things associated with it, with just the different stakeholder groups that we have there. But I'd be interested to hear what you guys learned about this, what your thoughts are. 
Yeah, that, uh, Todd mentioned one of the things we were tasked with is reviewing our parking situation every once in a while. And that's what we were in the middle of gathering information on neighboring towns to compare what we're doing to what they're doing um, and see if we were to make any recommendations. Mm -hmm. Didn't necessarily, I don't think, included your immediate focus. Mm -hmm. uh, Councillor Shoup um, recommended that you guys come to us to talk and and whatnot to see if there's any similarities. Yeah. Um, and you know exactly what you're looking for. So we didn't want to step on anybody's toes. Um, but I think there's general information that is mutual for, mm -hmm. for both parties and the town as a whole. Uh, and, and that's where we're getting at. Okay. I, no, I think that sure. absolutely makes sense. And I guess for me as a department, um, anytime we propose anything new, I always like to talk about purpose because then purpose cuts through a lot of the conflict because if we can all agree on the purpose before we start talking about what our options are, then we're a little more focused on trying to get to some point mm -hmm. versus having everybody have an opinion. Now I've, I've isolated this side of the table and it feels like I'm sporting this side of the table. So I'd be, and we don't have to do it to now, Mike, but once we get deeper in this process, I'd like to know a little more about purpose, you know, why we're doing it, you know, why we collect the fees, where they're going. Um, for me as a department, timeline is the most important thing for me is when you try to implement something like this so we have ample time to do all the infrastructure signage education all the things come with a change like this um and 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 i'll fall back up with tom on the enforcement but everything that i've talked to with everybody everything we've kind of talked about here comes back to lack of enforcement and that's not a knock on the police department we just haven't committed all the resources to take care of the enforcement and we'll talk a little more when we get into kind of the beach environment with the park ranger hired this year and kind of how we want to do that and that messaging. But those are my biggest concerns because we can charge all we want. We can ticket every space. Um, and then ultimately the last thing that resonates in my head as a, as a department director is, uh, and this was, is what do we want to now be known as a scabber? Are we welcoming? Are we not? Why are we charging? Are we just trying to grab, that's why purpose of money. You know, if we could say, hey, we're doing this to replace this, or this is what, it's going right back to the streets to improve your parking experience. Or, hey, beachgoer, it's going to improve your parking experience because we just put that money towards a new bathhouse. That makes me feel better than saying I'm just charging you because I feel like I need to charge you. Mm -hmm. And so how that purpose and that mission, so that's what I would be. For me, once I get involved, if I'm asked to get involved, that's where I'd be kind of looking for a little more detail before I stuck my nose into something because um, it's complicated. And I really strive to make sure all three beaches operate the same even I know they're completely different entities and they all get different vibes and different circumstances and how close is but if I got to enforce or educate on four different sets of rules it doesn't work now with one set of rules you know so just trying to make sure that we have something and be a little more foresight regarding okay let's talk about Ferry Beach area and let's talk about the Higgins Beach area are there um opportunities there if this something would move forward we're we going to be getting that conversation next and how that affects so just trying to look at the whole situation as a whole but i appreciate all the work and you know when we're asked to get involved i'm happy to have conversations but those are my concerns because some, some people don't understand how how long it takes to put a good implement something <laughs> like you're talking about yeah. vetting a company sign of education hoping we have wi-fi so I can collect the money and more importantly, have something down there to enforce it when PD gets 300 calls because somebody's in the parking spot too long. So um, to be able to think about those challenges and do they meet the need of what we're trying to get. Is the juice worth the squeeze, if you will. So can but. you, I, I, I think it makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. to set parking rates uniformly. Oh, absolutely. So following up on what Todd just said, your purpose for doing this is to allow equitable access, mm -hmm. particularly for those who have permits and yes. balance the needs. And is there, will any of the revenue go towards like 
Probably the parking lot needs repair after the storm yesterday. Uh -huh. So it, it's re, it's cycling back into the maintenance and the infrastructure in that area. Yeah, that's a good question. And that's something we did talk with Tom Hall about. And apparently, you know, there's a big pot of money. And, and Where is it? <laughs> so you can tell that I don't get involved in these things too frequently. There's a big pot of money. No, but but there are um, there is apparently an account someplace that because people are already charged for boat launch fees and clamming fees and all these other fees, and money goes into an account, and apparently that account is used to do things like replace the cranes on the commercial right. pier, which is something we're doing right now. So there's ongoing things that are happening. And our thought was that the parking revenue, at least for the Pine Point Park, would be going into that fund mm -hmm. so that when in the future we have these infrastructure needs, like eventually replacing the pedestrian pier, which could cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Right. Now, obviously, there's going to be some capital investment by the town, but at least this can put a dent in that right. and kind of help share the expense. So we definitely feel that that makes a lot of, a lot of sense. Yeah. I just want to take a second and educate this board in the sense of when and this is no disrespect to Mike, but there's there's ongoing capital costs every year to enforce what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And so part of that, when we get into that, is yes, you may make two hundred thousand dollars. You're making up a number, two hundred thousand dollars a year, but you may have one hundred twenty thousand dollars in enforcement. Mm -hmm. And so where does that, like Mike, what's where does the balance go? Because that's how we build out without impacting the taxpayer. Mm -hmm. And the beaches right now, waterfront committee. They have a reserve account where all the parking and pier and morning fees go. That's where they can then come back through their recommendation to council and say, hey, we'd like to buy a new crane or the harbor master over here. She is at the time. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing with us. We have a beach reserve account that our parking lot funds after we net everything out, cost of staff, repairs, anything above our budget presentation uh, prediction and anything we didn't spend goes in that reserve account and there's a charge for how we spend that. So they have that kind of as well. And so um, just so we're all, you know, that's how those work above and beyond those operational costs. So okay. I appreciate your thoughts on the enforcement thing. Because that's something we talked about quite a bit. Because, and it's the same idea that if you can't enforce this, what's the point of doing it? And I did meet with Tom Hall a couple months ago, and that was one of the topics that I brought up with him. And he somewhat assured me that they could, they being the town, could handle that. He said that they already do enforcement at Havens Beach. Where they could do the same kind of a process. And, and part of what we as a committee are, are kind of doing, like I said, we've been talking about this for years and we're spending some productive time on it, but we're getting to a point where we, we know we can't solve all these problems. And I think enforcement is a good example of that, that we're kind of at the point where we think we need to make a recommendation and it's going to go up to the next level where it's going to get to the town council and the whole debate will be reopened again yep. and, and some of these things will come to a head and um, enforcement I think is one of those is it, I'm concerned about how they would do that also are they going to hire somebody to work part-time over the summer to go check parking I think there's a there's numerous ways all I can say is that there would need to be uh, more funds invested in that process whatever that process is if it's if it's automated someone still needs to check it if it's staff right either way, I don't believe we have adequate resources right now to enforce what we're doing mm -hmm. um, versus adding, you know, another a couple hundred parking spots within a mile block. You know, that's that that takes a lot of time. And so over a seven day period, over a six month season. And that's substantial. That's substantial investment. So um, but either way, I think you're right. That's the conversation. And I don't I don't think it's a. I think it's worthwhile, but as long as we do all those pieces and make sure it happens, because then it won't be successful. So, um, <clears throat> so I just like to throw in that some coordination of fee schedules and hours and those sorts of things is probably valuable. But our committee has been doing this, our department has been doing this for a long time. And has the staff and the capability and the accounting procedures and the infrastructure to manage the parking at the beaches 
in a way that responds to other constituencies that might might not be readily apparent. For example, we're not going to get a lot of charter boat captains parking at Heard Park or their customers <clears throat> parking there. And yet we are going to get demands and calls for trash collection and beach cleaning and upgrading to conditions in the pavement and the bathrooms and the, the snack stand and parking access and egress. And our constituencies are, are broader than, and, and I, I use the parking at the co-op, so I'm aware of both aspects of it. But our constituencies are very varied. And we, we have a number of people that drive here from neighboring towns and we kind of feel like we, we have a duty to remember that you know we should be a good neighbor and we happen to have access to the beach and we're fortunate but we shouldn't be closing it off and i definitely don't think that we should be using this as a, a piggy bank to fund other things that are not specific to the use of the of the beach and the infrastructure that it requires and so it's important that these things get funded. The pedestrian pier is very valuable because it's a safe way for people to get there. And it's, it, it's unique and it has a lot of value. Definitely something that, that needs to be looked at and, and funded. And maybe out of this department, but we already have the infrastructure and, and the staff. And, it, you know, we do have the accounts and, and they're under supervision of community service and town's finance department, and they're audited. And so we have a lot of controls already in place. And we also have other needs that we balance. And so if we look at the amount of money that, the amount of revenue that comes from parking, we say, oh, that's great. Let's fund daycare with it. But, you know, then we have to stop and say, well, that's probably not the most appropriate thing to do. And so the, the parking fees are, are, you know, useful. and They have to be there to perform a rationing function because there are days in the summer when you just can't park, can't find a park, place to park easily around any of the beaches. So it's necessary to do that. But we, as as a department and as an advisory board, hear from a lot of users. And there are a lot of criteria and elements that go into our decision making that that are unique. And and you know, that's not to say that there aren't unique issues elsewhere. It's really it's it's really important for commercial fishermen, mooring holders, users. To be able to use the facilities, and you know, you, you can't launch a boat off Route One because you know it's not very useful, and so it has to happen there. But while it's important to have coordination and collaboration and communication, it's very useful to have that. There's enough difference that we, we, you kind of need to. There's enough difference in our constituencies that we need to focus on the things that are unique and we have the infrastructure to do it. So we can send people down to respond to blown over porta potties and things that you know require our staff to do. Does this that's, that's much sense? Thank you. Fred. Does it make sense as you draw close to a recommendation when you're in your draft phase to if you're inclined to do so board us one? forward it to us to give it a once over and oh absolutely yeah if, if you're right this is a shared responsibility if your yes. purview we could endorse it as well okay strength in numbers hopefully going to town council um yeah or share concerns or pauses or concerns yeah. to be addressed or things that right you know because there is cause and effect to certain things no matter what and so Sometimes hearing from multiple boards gives you different perspectives, so that way you're considering other avenues of 
you know, we heard from Penny on here about people that are saying $30 and now I got to pay, you know, depending on what it is, there's no more spots. And so I've got some notes when we start talking about beach environment that I just had in my head regarding how I hope we can make some of our choices and lead some of our conversations tonight around beach environment because there isn't a cause and effect to decisions we make. So, uh, but we can definitely do. It. You're right. We should be working together because it's a, it's, yeah. it's not just a point point co-op parking lot issue. Yeah. It's a bigger issue than that. Right. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Right. Is. Right. That makes sense. Well, thank you for presenting and um, you know, giving us a chance to hear it. Um, and you're more than welcome to stay for the remainder of, of the uh, evening or until we talk about parking our, on our end. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll stick around. All right. I've Sounds always great. wanted to go to one of these committee meetings. And, uh, well, thank you. I have no availability to ever join another committee. Meeting. Yeah. <laughs> All right. On to item six, budget overview. Todd. Sure. Just um, uh, Katie and, and Mike, uh, the front door is locked. If you hear somebody banging on it, Karen's coming this way after a meeting. So let me, do you I have her cell? I, I, can I do, yeah. Just let her know it's locked and okay. knock and we'll, or text you, we'll come let her in. Okay. Randy, when she left the last event, locked the door. And so um, <laughs> that way we're just all good there. So I appreciate it. Um, so everybody should have in their packet um, what I'm calling just a budget overview. We haven't really dove into the capital piece uh, as a group yet. We, we've met with everybody. We've done kind of first rounds. Um, I'm just, Because I have two new managers this year in my budget process, I'm spending a lot of more time with them at ground zero, making sure they have access to accounts and understand why they're there. I put the whole thing together last time. So you know, when I talk to my parks manager, he doesn't know if he's got a thousand dollars for shovels or he's got two thousand dollars for shovels. You know, you know, but so networking through that with them, and, and now that we're fully staffed, we're also looking at um, is the money we have are we spending it in the proper way before I ask for more, and um, uh, you know, are we hitting the gaps that we've kind of identified? So this is just a high level overlook of the kind of what I'm targeting for this budget. Totally looking for um, uh, input, but for just for kind of a, a starting point, uh, last year's budget was approved at just over three point six million. It's right on the top of your budget sheet there too. Um, three point six million dollars. Just for perspective, our parks division is just over a million dollars out of that budget. Um, revenue, uh, we predict to make just over eight point uh, two point eight million dollars. Um, the parks division is um, proposed to make just over $259,000. And the reason why I break out the parks division is we don't have a lot of operational choices in the parks division regarding what we charge. Most of those services are free you know, or, they, um, or they're supporting the school. And so I identify that for the reason of when you look at the bottom line, when you net out what we asked for the taxpayer last year, $829,217. When you take the parks division away from my budget, the parks division nets out at $827,291. That means we're $2,000 away from being 100% self-funded if we take the parks away. So we're making good business choices. We're charging appropriately. Yes, there are certain areas that, that uh, fund other things like we talked about, and we're looking at that right now. Um, and so... We'll kind of talk about, but that's kind of what I want to paint the picture of kind of how we're operating and have been operating. And so um pretty proud of the staff and where we've kind of kept that line. So um hold on, hold on, it's breaking anymore. Yeah. Uh the uh other than parks, rec, and beaches, yep. are there any other categories? Yeah, so we have five divisions. We've got what I call my admin, and the admin division does all the registration, uh, that handles the uh cable station, that handles passports. Uh, and that handles all of our marketing and our fundraising stuff all happens in that in that division. And then uh, anything in this building as far as just scheduling. Uh, also in that division, um, as you guys may remember, we relinquished scheduling of the school buildings back to the school last budget, thankfully. Um, we still do all the outdoor scheduling for all the facilities. We still do all the town indoor facility scheduling through that admin division. Um, so that's still all living there, Emily. Uh, we have intergenerational. Uh, we just did, if you'll remember, when we brought Steve Kramer and promoted him to parks and, excuse me, recreation and waterfront manager. We did a little reshuffle there. So um, we have recreation and we've moved our adult 
programming, which used to be called senior programming, now adults under rec. Um, so that's recreation. Um, we have intergenerational, which we're going to talk about if we still call it that because there's not seniors under them anymore. Um, but they do all of our child care before and after, summer camp, day camps um, is handled in that division. Um, then we have our beaches division and parks division. Uh, not in this number. I supervise the facilities budget um, for uh, town hall, public safety building, um, and Garwin Turgeon is in a separate division that I don't share with you. It lives under Tom. I manage it. Um, so that's those are the divisions that that equals out to. Um, but for high level kind of things, as a department, because we're staff and we have time, we're going to go back and kind of revisit our mission and value statements to make sure we're hitting those. Um, I think we've done a pretty good job with that. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, we're looking at the, um, both in the master plan, um, prioritizations that you guys put together this early year for us as far as goals and what you'd like to see. So we're targeting those type of things uh, as well as trying to educate on some of those longer, and I'll explain in the rec on one of those, so those things there. Um, Again, going back to um, if some of you remember the comprehensive plan, they had that nice wheel of 10 principles, you know, being bold, be, you know, all those type of things. We're going to kind of, when we do our budget, pre budget presentation this year, kind of target some of those. So that way we're doing all this surveying and all this comprehensive plan and we might as well use it and give us some guideline. And if you don't, then we need to change it. So um, Planning's done an excellent job um, reviewing impact fees. So they, we've worked with them. They've taken projects out of our comprehensive plan. Hopefully that'll go to council in the next couple months, of, but we're pushing the recreational impact fees. We've always had them, not a really strong charge that follows them uh, and why we're collecting them. She's done updated that with all the growth. So that way everybody's paying into the, our park system and that piece. And so then, um, I pulled out projects that meet the criteria of projects that are either um, may, uh, remodeling something that's there to meet growth or a new asset to meet the needs of growth. And that's what that money is kind of designed to do. So we'll be able to hopefully in this budget process, put some more projects in the queue for one or two years out as we start to collect these impact fees and say, OK, we're going to build a new exclusive playground, inclusive playground at X, and we're going to use this impact fees. Uh, along the way. Um, and then for me, um, looking at our department policies, a lot of what we have are, is outdated or if not at all. So um, really want to focus this year on three areas which meet, meet our goals. Um, financial sustainability policy. Um, and that policy will be written around um, when we have to make hard choices. One, taking care of the things we have, <laughs> uh, investing in those first or decommissioning something. When we do that and then when we're going to invest, how do we choose uh, what we do? That's the same kind of model with capital investment plan is our infrastructure, when and where. Um, and then when we want to grow, what are the criteria that we expect when we say, okay, we're going to build a community center. If you're not going to fund the budget to operate it every year, why are we going to build it? It's all those type of things. So when we put something forward, there's a policy that we can get council to hopefully support within the next two years to say, okay, these are all things when you say yes, this is what you're committing us to. Yes. Um, and then the last one is social equity. And that policy is more for us to, as a department and as a town, to think about um, when you say you're putting in a trail, social equity doesn't mean it's built for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, someone that can walk or on a roll on a wheelchair or on a bike, how do we make it the best we can at, at the first time around? So, and that's just one example of kind of looking at that. So I'm kind of diving into those three policies right now. Uh, under the administration, um, we've started this with summer camp, uh, reviewing all our fees. Um, uh, sometimes we, we do fees, and I think everybody does, but arbitrarily where there's no like, hey, we're on a 10% curve or the staff costs have gone up 20%, let's make that recovery margin. So I've challenged park staff, I mean, sorry, intergenerational staff, we're going up on summer camp fees this year just due to our, our staffing costs and the cost of trips and what we've seen. So um, just every fee is going to get reviewed uh, to meet the net revenue costs. Um, we're vetting two softwares right now, which is probably going to be about a $5,000 cost, but uh, the state is changing how we do uh, record protection and also compliance, HIPAA, all that sort of stuff. 
Um, and so these softwares integrate with our rec track, but then it'll be able to add a fingertip, have staff have the records they need, doing digital rosters and digital emergency versus having binders and books like we do presently now. Um, so that's something we're in the process of doing now, which we will do regardless because we have to, uh, but we're vetting that. Um, kind of on the same thing that you guys talked about with your uh, getting uh, different district liaisons around town, we're going to start having some conversations and I don't think we really need to invest a lot of money, but more about philosophy is when we hear something in, how are we getting back to what's going on? So information is coming into our department, but we're also saying, you know, Trish, thank you for letting us know it's something we'll add to the budget or we try, you know, try to, we can't right now, but just so that way it doesn't seem like it's just, it doesn't end there, you know? Um, and then if it's something that needs further, we can bring it here to be able to say, okay, should we be considering this in future budgets and where does it fit in your goals? Um, Sponsorship development, we really took a hit with COVID, um, but it's back going. Nicole Hall, my ops manager, put this together. Um, we are up to about $14,000 in that sponsors this year so far um, for different things. And so she did a great job. That's out now. Uh, it's She's talking about getting the set cone with Chamber. We kind of talk about what other things people will look for for business in town, but this is just her first crack. And I think she did an amazing job pulling together as we do that on the rec side. Um, I don't have them all listed here just because of the, my time limit, but we will target the things in the master plan that we've talked about and that people brought forward zero to five programming, uh, uh, parks and outdoor education programming, uh, teens, and then those active adults, kind of that 20 to 45 range. That's where we're going to spend some time there. Um, I mentioned to you foreshadowing, and I'll put it in the budget, which I know it'll get cut out, but I will start asking this year for another recreation programmer, because in the budget, it says we can't program anymore unless we get more help, because you can't manage more than your span of control, and so we'll put it in, get out, we'll do what we can do, just knowing that that way, you got to start planting that seed and then be able to show the data. Uh, on the gender and generational side, I talked about we've done summer camp, we're doing that. Uh, we started this last year, but it was also one year goal list, reinvesting more in our staff. So trying to pull staff leadership and really focus on training of kids. And we've identified that we've done a pretty good job, but we can be better. And knowing that we're getting younger students on staff and how do we educate them? They're not parents. They haven't gone through that experience. They don't know how to deal with somebody that's how to redirect behavior and those type of things. So we're really trying to talk about how we teach and mentor. Um, not just week one, but through the entire seven week summer or the entire 40 week aftercare program. Um, we've seen some challenging things this year. Um, we are increasing team programs. We brought those back last year for trips. Uh, good success, we're, but we're going to go, we're going to dedicate a staffer um, to bring some more part timers on the camp, but we're going to go from two days a week to three full trip days a week for teams to kind of meet one of those goals you guys were targeting. Um, as well as a budget item here, we're getting numbers now, but um, replacing our camp radios, we could probably, it doesn't sound like a lot, but it's probably like a $5,000 investment to do that. Uh, on the parks and grounds side thing, um, last year when we were short three positions, four at one point, out of five, mind you, um, we used contracted mowing. Uh, we had great success last year with contracted mowing. It allows the staff that we had to do uh, hit the deferred maintenance list really hard um, and we're fully staffed right now. We filled the two members that we received from the school department funded last year um, and Jill is working on and we're working on as a staff a review of 2023 especially around our parks department so you can see all the things they've done right from where we would normally contract for somebody shingling and roofing and painting all the things that they've taken on and a lot of that's in the master plan so I can go back and say that project was listed as $2,500. We did it for 300 You know what I mean? Um, and so I see a lot of value in looking at the outside contract and knowing, and that's what I'm going to go for for this year to kind of keep that fund. I think I can do that internally without raising the budget um, and justifying the CIP turnaround and the deferred maintenance. So that's a big goal for the parks. Um, and um, it's been a goal of mine forever. Uh, and Tom Hall and I, town manager, have been talking about it. Um, if anybody's been through Gorham or Westbrook, uh, those towns are all lit by a private company. And so that company just happens to be in Scarborough. And so <laughs> we've met with them, and it's a great 
you know, it's not cheap, but I think it's going to be worth it. We're going to work through some of our electrical challenges, but I will be putting in a number to contract Christmas lighting or holiday lighting and increase that volume. Um, this company, they come in, they tell you what they want to do. They buy the lights, they install the lights, and they take them away. And if there's a storm like there was today, they come straighten them up. And so it's, it's an all-inclusive number that we just walk away from, um, and you're getting... When I'm talking, like you see the lines, are, no, my guys do a great job and I hung half of them this year, but my lines are not straight and they're not six inches apart and we don't rent boom lifts to get into a big oak tree. And so, you know, we're talking about a $30,000 number, but we're talking about potentially all Memorial Park. We're talking about town hall and all the Christmas trees around like a centerpiece of, um, so that's on the wish list of that would be a new ask for, but do you think with that there's any potential to get a perceived five thousand dollar trade sponsorship Excellent. i think that i think once we finalize yes you know. no i think nicole had mentioned that i think that that's a again this is maybe something that again if the council box we might be able to go Especially where they're in scarborough but it's put up put out and get some sponsorship get some donations kind of put into i think it'd be really worthwhile to see what they what these other communities do and be able to get more people outside yeah. walking and driving we kind of see um, and then they've already started brainstorming in the back how do we get to businesses and how do we get maps and all that stuff out for next year too if we know this investment is coming so um that's a big lift for us um goal we've got eight more to do but transition away from paper towels and hand dryers at all of our parks and bathrooms <laughs> one it helps with vandalism and two it's just easier on the maintenance crew um, but each dryer is probably about a twelve hundred dollar investment but when you think about paper and all the costs, the life of it and breaking and replacing, because um, units are about $800 and then you're between two and $300 of electric cost to get those installed. But after that, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good, good investment on the backside. Um, question of the parks, cut the vision. We haven't got uh, a quote on this yet, but looking for a Wi-Fi driven security system for our shops area, but also uh, targeting our, our bathrooms and all of our parks. We've had numerous, numerous vandalisms this year where we've locked down facilities for months um, and opened them back up. And so um, trying to figure out what that is. Casey, our parks manager from Texas, I'm not sure, Alex, if you have any of that in Portland, but he had all his cameras on his phone. It was all Wi Fi. He could click it and hit Willie and it would show the two cameras on the bathroom door so he could go back. And, and it was all cloud based where, okay, we know that from 10 o'clock at night to Two o'clock in the morning. This happened. Get back to that time frame. So, um, just to be able to try to change some behavior in some of these neighborhood parks that we're starting to see. Um, and then, lastly, it's not on your list, but uh, I'll do it as a public service announcement. We will be deciding in the next week or two if we're going to invest. Or no, probably the next week. Are we going to invest any more time and resources into the ice rink um, behind the shop? <laughs> water melted snow ice never melted if it doesn't freeze we can't get anything on it so we meant just let naked nature take yeah. its choice uh, its chance on it and see where it is so um so where i where i say that is we're going to be looking at multiple options for the town to consider you know we do we invest in that area to do minimal do we divert, uh, divest from that area do we invest in something else what else we haven't gotten that far down the road it's time for the discussion around what we do um in time frame uh, and then lastly on the beach a lot of our stuff on the beaches is maintenance um site maintenance if anybody's been at higgins shower water comes out into the driveway runs down to the right hand parking lot and now we have a crater so we need to contract with public works to put a uh, a drain in just off that lip to fix that and then the goal is to then uh, regrade and no. um, is Karen? Is that Karen? I, guess, I heard something, but maybe not. I'll tell you a text when she's here. Uh, nope. Okay, just hearing um, things. And then, Are you sure it's only a crater after yeah. yesterday? Yeah, well, no, yeah, it might be a might be a uh, well inverted volcano right now. But then <laughs> reclaim that parking lot to be able to get it back so oh, it's manageable. So she's here. Uh, same thing at heard in that ferry. Um, seal coating, crack sealing, seal coating, and striping those parking lots again. It's been been four or five years since we've done any of that maintenance um and after these storms when they come in with the brushes and the plows and everything to clean up that that stuff just disappeared um mike may know and i'll get to harbor 
uh, well, I'll get to the Harbor Master and Tom, but um, Ferry, they did the dredge project there. And so they really, took, Steve has been managing, well, he's been keeping track of that parking lot. There's a lot of lifted parking. There's a lot of stuff from that equipment. So nice. I will, once we're done, we took starting pictures, we'll get finishing pictures to be able to say that, that company needs to help refurbish what they've managed um, along the way. So, um, and then improvements. I've got Steve quoting, and then we just discussed this before. So, we'll blur it. hi, Karen. Hey, Karen. Um, we've uh, um, oh, I see it. Uh, getting quotes on installing gates at uh, the Herd Park parking lot. So we can have them um, entry and exit two different areas to kind of help with traffic flow, but then manage. We've had a lot of complaints with police at after hours activities. Uh, and the gates would be designed the same way that Higgins operates. They go up at a certain time, we collect fees. The exit is always a bump gate. So no matter what time you're there, you bump up um, and uh, you can let yourself out. Uh, it took three gate repairs for people to figure that out at Higgins once we put it in, because they didn't know they could drive up. They just had their buddy go up there and yarn the thing up and drive underneath it before they knew they could just pull their car within six inches and it went up. So um, we'll do a better job educating if that goes that route. Um, I will be bringing you, I just, I didn't want to overwhelm, but I did, um, I do have an updated herd park parking design and kind of project that I'll be bringing forward in the capital improvement plan for a couple of years out, but I'll get it through you guys first. That, at our next meeting, hopefully, um, which is plenty of time in the budget process. Um, but everything I'm trying to do with gates, dealing with trolley stops, are all things that are integrated in that plan, whether we do something or not, but they're direct improvements. Um, we will, we after our Higgins Beach meeting, we committed as a town, both police and community services. My staff will start it probably in February, but we'll do a sign inventory, making sure signs are still adequate. If they're not, take them down. If the messaging is not right, how do we change the messaging? And if they're a disrepair, getting updated ones. Um, so that'll be an ongoing lot at all the, the, um, the lots. Uh, and then we did get funded last year for a, I can't remember how, to, how many weeks it was, but a seasonal part-time park ranger working on that job description now. It's one of the conversations I want to have with, with Alex, you know, kind of how they've you know got their program going, but those key points. Um, I will tell you in the CIP plan, my plan is we have a pickup truck that needs to be replaced from a frontline plow vehicle and work truck, but to get another vehicle in the CIP plan and then take that 2014 and pass it down to the parks ranger crew and the beach crew. That way they're not driving around their own vehicle. They can empty trash or, or pick up an animal or do something. They have a pickup truck to do it and we're not reinvesting in multiple things. So kind of looking at that plan, how we trickle down some of those vehicles. Um, and then also in this, it says, um, I will be putting in some money for, for future park rangers. Just they keep it in. They do. I think the program will be successful enough that we need to start adding to it for the future. So um, excited to get that off the ground. Uh, and then really the only other big thing that, again, part of that replacement and equipment, um, we are looking at all of our parks equipment. Um, and if we were to get um, the approval to stay with contracted mowing, we're looking at how we uh, decommission or don't or reinvest trade in some of our existing equipment because we don't need as much um, to be able to get equipment that you can do multiple things where I know Portland, you guys run Veritrax, we've had them um, where you get a mowing deck, you can get ditch witch, you can get different pieces versus just having a mower that we have right now in some of our units. So how do we diversify some of our equipment um, so we don't need the amount of riding mowers we have if we're not mowing for the outside parks. Um, and so how do we get other stuff where we have skilled operators now that can drill holes, dig ditches, you know, lay pipe and do some do some different skill sets we haven't had. So that is the budget overview, just kind of where we're targeting. I'll have a much better budget number wise for you guys in March. Glad that was just an overview. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, nice job. No, it, yeah. it, it, there's so much there. But I'll get I'll have numbers come March. Well, you know, we're getting the town timeline in the next week or so. So yeah. we're just we've got a lot of cleanup to do this year. So I have a question. Yeah, yeah. Um just to I did follow all of that. Yep. Good, good. job. Uh, Let me yeah, know when you want me to yeah, start as the as the rec uh, coordinator. Yep. Um but so the the revenue for for parks that comes in is that like facilities from like 
field rentals and not because that's not is that b22 so beach money has its own reserve account the three beaches and season passes that goes in a separate that's totally separate yep. so is this just facility rental is pretty much what that yeah so the, the reason why that number is so high this year there is like a hundred and I don't have the number in my head exactly but just call it around hundred and forty thousand dollars reimbursement from the school for the two parked positions so that number is usually like around a hundred and ten thousand dollars give or take and that's renting of the lights, renting of the turf, grass space. We have um, okay. use agreements with all the youth sports teams, Little League, they use the fields, soccer, we charge, we paint all their fields for them. So okay. that's that revenue. So roughly between that and the, that division roughly pays for itself. What about rec? Uh, rec, child care. No, no, just rec. Rec pays for itself. So when you have a poster program and you put a fee, the money that comes in equals up your costs yes. for the program. The only where that's not 100% true statement is special events. That is yeah. funded through some of the, if we can't sponsor it all, mm -hmm. then that comes as an offset as part of from taxes. Okay. Yep. Now the other, now child care or yep. the other ones. Uh, child care is, a, is totally, makes money. Yep. Totally self and supports and summer camp makes money and supports. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. Yeah. Previously, we talked about setting aside or budgeting for land for the community center. So that is an ongoing process. In a, uh, we, we talk about the community center update. Uh, I've got in there packet kind of what we're talking about Tuesday, and I can give you a five second, five minute overview <laughs> on that. But yes, <laughs> we we have to decide as a council what we're doing and where we're going, and that's still a work in progress. But I can tell you uh, when we get there, I don't want to double dip here and time wise. Um, what the steps are in that next process. Okay. Yep. Thank you. And then the impact fees come into play again. Okay. So there, we just, um, they've just been handed. Um, and so it's going to be part of the process. I just asked the same question at our department and me because I they've been completed. And then now I think it's got to run through finance and council about can we get them implemented for this next budget cycle. So when I put my capital improvement plan together, when we look at FY26 or 27, I don't have to put tax as a, as a code, I can put impact fee as a code. Um, and so that's, we're still hopefully, long, short answer, long, long answer, short, whatever you would say, it probably won't impact FY26, because we'll have to start collecting them. But hopefully they're implemented for the FY25 budget as far as charging homeowners and businesses. Yeah, yeah. fingers crossed. Yeah, very well. Thanks, Todd. Yes, sir. All right. Uh... Item seven, beach review environment, changes need to be made, and data. Um, I have three beach st stories involving dogs that I can talk about that I'd like to share. Yep. Um, over the break, um, I was at the beach with my three kids and, um, a dog ran up to us. The owner was, I don't know, not within 10 feet. Uh, and he said it was, my kids were visibly freaking out. And the guy said, he, the dog's always around kids, meaning like it should be fine that he's around your kids. And I said to him, that doesn't mean my kids like your dog. Mm -hmm. And he said, okay. And then walked away. Did he bring um, his dog with him? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Oh, we're lucky. Um, yeah. And then, um, let's see. The second thing that happened was um, we were getting out of my minivan and a dog, an elderly woman was walking her dog down the street and apparently the dog got excited to see my kids. So ran away from her, got off his harn leash harness or something and jumped all over my six-year-old. Um, my two other kids were freaking out and I told them, just get in the car, just get in the car. Um, the woman eventually caught her dog, but she couldn't control him enough to put the harness back on. So then he ran away and I had I was trying to help her get him because I couldn't protect all three of my kids at the same time. Um, I felt like I was on candid camera over at the break, like with all these. I was like, Do what? kids have like Lunchables in their pockets? And they like, <laughs> yeah, they I don't know. Every time they're they're all good in general. Yeah. 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 Um, and then the last, on New Year's Day, we were diving into the water, not diving, going into the water. Um, and a dog came down the steps from Ocean Ave on Higgins Beach. Um, and there was someone at the top and I said, is this your dog? And they said, no. And then maybe five seconds later, someone came down. And meanwhile, the dogs on the beach, the person's 
still on the sidewalk, the dogs on the beach, my kids again are visibly freaking out. And I said to him, your dog is not allowed to approach us within 10 feet without her consent. And he said, shut up. And I said, excuse me. And he said, um, just be quiet. And I said, I was like shocked. And then he walked away. Um, and the other thing I'll say about uh, when we were at the beach on New Year's Day is there was all these dogs running around and all the kids who didn't want to interact with the dogs were on the rocks to get away from the dogs. It wasn't just my kids. It was a group of kids while the dogs like ran around chasing. And it just, I was shocked that these, I've never, I mean, it was a lot in a small span of time. I, I think those are good stories. I think you should email town council. We got an email from the elderly woman last week who was jumped on. Yeah. I have been jumped on and the guy was on a, on a conference call, so he couldn't deal with it. Yeah. I, I feel like in that it's, it is a problem. I'm not saying we're going to make any changes, but I think we just need to like make people more aware that I think it's worse. Than I think that everybody's going to always feel differently and you're never going to please anybody, but I think that rules are in place for a reason and the people who break those rules ruin it for everybody. Yes. Yes. Just making it hard. So, yeah. yeah. So I, I did the homework you guys asked me to do last meeting. Uh, we're talking. I know. I thought we were all assigned. I was assigned. Yeah. But yeah. but mine were already done when I went in. I. So did you do mine? Roger did. did some, and I kept going. Oh. Okay. Oh. But <laughs> your wife. Did a lot of it. Oh. Mine so had... we owe you her a thing. I had. To... <laughs> Never mind. Was my, great. My... I'll start with my homework because we're talking about. Okay. Dogs. Sorry. No, I misunderstood. you're all good. You're all good. Nope. Um. No. Was 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 dogs and to reach out to Katie and the dogs yes. group and so we had a great conversation. Um, I told her that I would do a couple of things that I'll share with you. Um, and so I think that, you know, and, and Katie can obviously speak for herself. Um, you know, there are calls that are reported and there's calls that aren't reported. I didn't report any. Yep, no, absolutely. Yeah. I didn't and again, but I yeah. think Emily hit the note on the head is that, and I go back to the conversation we we're just having with Mike. I think we need to figure out how do we improve in education mm -hmm. that helps with enforcement before we talk about restriction, that's kind of how my mindset is in the session that we had was, so I did the data and just so you guys are aware of kind of what the data was in 2023, 2022 in all the beaches, because they have it all coded. It was 62 calls uh, total at the beaches, which includes dead seagulls, seals, sharks, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. There were um, 22 calls for dog incidents and uh, three were uh, three more for lost dog. Somebody had lost their dog, and so the dog was at large, but it was a loss. So I want to make sure that it doesn't it's not like a, a negative. Um, increase in calls in 2023. Um, 73 calls, 30, uh, 36 were dog-oriented. Um, there were, which I love to see, there was more enforcement this year, or at least more attempt to enforce. There was like nine calls that I didn't count on there, which would lower that number of 73, but they wanted to keep track of it where... Uh, the animal control officer or police officer walked the beach to check for compliance. So there was like nine or 10 of those in there. So that call number, and there wasn't that in 2022. So that's a great, that's an improvement by the police department. So when you take those away, the calls of incident are probably the same over the two years. Um, after, after chatting with Katie, a um, couple of things for me that I need the town to do, and I think we can do it better. Um, one is, um, I've already chatted with Tody. Tody's the town clerk, if you don't know. We've only been handing out dog information with beach passes. So now they're going to hand it out when they do licensing. So just where if there's an opportunity, how do we get better and, and do that sort of stuff? Um, really an idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I get it. And and sometimes though. That I gave 10 years ago, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's the thing though, and I'm sure it's still well beyond just that. 10 years well, ago. Yeah, no, I've got to read yeah, so, It's yeah. not, I think it's people coming from outside of Scarborough. <laughs> well, when I look Because every this. other town yeah. requires leashing. I had the same situation yeah. with it, which I didn't report. Right. I noticed the signs don't say voice control. Yeah. And they don't explain what voice control is. Exactly. Yeah. So I love the idea of handing it out. Yeah. But those are the responsible people, right? right. It's people that are who are coming because dogs. they don't have to right. leash their dogs and other. Right. So that leads me back to going back to the signage, evaluating them. Our, is our messaging proper? Instead of saying, you know, leash, voice control, what, you know, doing that educational piece on our end, because um, the other part is, is the park rangers. You know, if we don't have people there, it's not the job. 
of a citizen to tell someone else to leash their dog or leave my kid alone. You know what I mean? It's it's just not. And so how do we employ these park rangers? Problem is, I can tell you right now, I can't have one person be at Higgins, Pine Point, and Ferry all during off leash hours. You know what I mean? So I think that we're going to have to, my goal is for us to kind of figure out as a group, what are measurables and what we want our goal outcomes to be, and then figure out how that we can supplement that with staff to be able to see how do we improve behavior. Because if you're there alone and I, I'm a park ranger and, and Rick's got his dog off leash, hopefully I'm going to that person before he jumps on you to say, hey, you know you're not supposed to be here now or whatever, because not everybody is responsible dog owners. Um, we also talked about um, figuring out what are the data points we want to look at for 2024 in my mind uh, we talked about increasing our educational opportunities um, partnering for a march or an april event some sort of you know uh, my staff's brainstorming now uh, partnering with a dog group or some sort of dog festival where it's like hey bring everybody in here's positive things here's the rules of PAWS. yes pause pause festival <laughs> and we also talked about and i called it this pop-up events get it pop-up events yeah uh, getting the ranger, getting the dogs group at the beaches during the summer when we have off these stuff to just, how do we, how do we set some marks to be able to say, hey, these are all the things that we need to be able to kind of prevent. Um, and then for us, it's, again, people have to do it, but, uh, and Jill's pretty good at this, creating some really good target marketing. We are having problems right now with dog waste at Memorial Park. It's, um, we are going to be reaching out to the development across the street. We know it's four or five dog owners that walk their dog onto the park, take a poop, and walk back. And so <laughs> we can't, you know, so we've got signs. We've tried to do it in certain ways. The next step is to go visit the home association and say, hey, help us out. You know, you just did the same thing, Kate, with your message about the beaches as far as picking up. And so how do we reset the bar? How do we increase our education? How do we get people on the beaches and in the parks and on the trails to say, this is not okay, because just like parking, if no one's there to educate or enforce, we're chasing our no pun intended tails. Um, so well, a lot of dog puns. And so all the good puns we yeah, got. I'm just saying. But, so that's kind of what our conversation was, and I think that's something that we can take on without a lot of investment yeah. and things we should be doing anyways. Um, the investment's really going to come for boots on the ground, whether that's a reserve officer, whether that's a parks ranger, whether that's a volunteer whatever that's where the that's where the the piece is um i didn't dive down on these calls because they retract all the data where they lived who it was what you know that sort of stuff i don't have that piece in here so i couldn't tell you a lot of these calls how many were residents or non-residents or guests the other thing that we chatted about was trying to when we talk about target marketing leash uh, waste uh, how do we get to the seasonal rental groups? You know, I know that their group does a lot in Higgins, but who does Pine Point? How do we get to, the, is there a chance to get into this Airbnb market? Because when people come, I'm on vacation, and it doesn't mean you're going to tell me what to do for my week. And then we also have OOB on one end, that they have a different set of rules. And so we've got some you know, travel we, that way. We talk about regulating short-term rentals. And, you know, we, one thing, if you're going to sign up for a a rental with the town maybe we should be saying and here are your rules by the way yeah um and that's one way to educate with the rentals i think is because i think i think their fee might be coming a small one for rentals in the town and so yeah. that might give an opportunity for an audience in that way because i i do feel it's probably um, probably some of the issues you've got are renters and people from out of town who maybe even know the rules and just don't care you but know i think i think that there is also a pretty strong group of potentially residents in certain areas that, like I said, about Memorial Park that maybe need a little more education and maybe a... Uh... I think they're educated. If they're letting their dog poop, it's not about education. Yeah. They or, know they're supposed to... like. Yeah, yeah, especially when there's a sign that we yeah. put up there or uh, enforcement. Yeah, enforcement. Yeah. But that, I, like you said, I it's just hard. just one comment about that. Well, I'll wait. Do you want me to... No, okay. yeah. Yeah. And yeah, neither, this isn't good or bad. This is just my experience. And I... Um, because I always try to come from a place of curiosity and I always try to seek to understand first who lives in on Juneberry and Mulberry and those those people are all in their 70s, 80s or older. And 
because I've had this conversation because I can promise you there's no one in town that asks people to pick up after the dog more than I do put their dog on the leash at the right times when they're supposed to and follow the rules because I will when I speak later I'll, I'll tell you I, I don't ever want to do this again right right I don't <laughs> I want to be proactive as a town and solve problems together but sometimes the elderly folks they just have a hard time and I'm some would say, oh, well, then they shouldn't have a dog. I get that. And also tell you some of those people, that dog is the only family they have. And they literally can't even bend over to pick up the waste. And I know that sounds bad. And they, you know, and, and again, but I'm just, again, I always try to come from that place of why would someone just blatantly disobey? I tend to believe maybe I'm Pollyanna. I was Pollyanna when I was on the council. It was my nickname. Yeah. Because I believe in the good of people, and I believe people want to do good. You know. Anyway, just when I think of that particular yeah. neighborhood, yeah. when we say things like, "Well, they're coming from that neighborhood." Well, words matter because we, you know, do we know that, that for sure? We do because yeah. we've seen him walk back and go in his house. Yeah, well, like, I'd be knocking on the door. Well, that's what we're. I, I've tried to not have my parks back be confrontational. Yeah. They're just coming back with us to me now, and they have grass on their front lawn too. So it's it's you know I don't know, but I agree with you. Like. How do we be curious and how do we right? And my point is that but putting up wasting our time putting up signs isn't the answer. I agree. Yeah. Not always. Yeah. Yeah. Not no, nobody's gonna hurt. read it. But right. at least you can point yeah. to it and say, hey, yeah, yeah, I was gonna say that's the case that with, with my answer that this guy had three dogs that were all over the place, but I was reading the signs and I can't say I said to him, you sh they should be under voice control. No, they don't have to be, is was his response. And it doesn't say that on the sign. So I, I think some maybe signs would help. Well, I'd like one, maybe like big sign at each thing that lists everything so that people like that can go back yeah. and say these are all of the rules but right. other smaller signs or other places is a waste of time and maintenance is nobody Especially is going to bring everyone nobody's knows. going to, bring them. to clean well, up there's their dogs, 45 yeah. entrances to Pine Point Beach yeah there yeah. is yeah. you know there's a lot yeah. there's a lot of challenging right. stuff we talked about when we started talking about sign strategies you kind of know where we're coming about is doing more in our parking lot for visitors because that may be more people from away just you know Versus, and then how do we use our local resources to educate uh, some more prominent signs, but then some other signs that we're never going to put in enough detail on all the signs. But a lot of, we, I went to a marketing seminar and what they said on, on park rules was put a QR code because you could, you know, you can say that it says dog rules to see the whole list of the rules in writing, click here, because then I can go back as an enforcement and say, Yes, it may not say it here, but it is part of the rules. Just please, you know, whatever rule is, running, trash, you know, whatever you're doing, not just regarding dogs, but, you know, your sign would be a 70 feet by 70 feet, and, you know. Right. You know, it's just, and then what's really important, what's the most important message on that sign? Well, we did some, if you've seen the green and blue signs for the dogs, we, we change them seasonally. Because they're just more specific. It's about what you can do more than what you can do, and we change them. And so those got some good response. Uh, we'll, we'll look at the, the voice control thing, but we try to pick like, what are the things we're going to go down, you know, versus every, you know, every rule down the line that we're never going to enforce. And I would say, rather than think, so, I don't know, can I jump in with my yeah. comments? <laughs> Is yeah. this an appropriate yeah. time? So, the, the, one, I wanted to share one why I came to be here tonight yeah. and kind yeah. of, you know, what my concerns are. Um, and really it's two things. One, it's that what I've learned over the past 10 years, especially that, and this happens to me probably almost every day, there are always new dog owners, people who do come here from out of town that don't necessarily know. Um, and I'm constantly engaging those conversations and those people, they don't know the history. And when I share, even at Hope Todd, I took what was, it was really a two hour monologue that I could give you on everything that we went through down to you know two minutes <laughs> um they're like oh god i'm so sorry i i didn't know and i will do better and i say thank you because i you know basically you know share i gave up over four years of my life for this and i don't want to do it again and i, and I did bring that this by the way this is one of seven uh oh binders god. that i have this is just it is a combination of research on everything that under the sun from Audubon reports to dog park research to the animal control data like when we went through this 10 years ago people don't I mean it was a very thorough Roger knows <laughs> emotional 
um, big topic in town. And so I'd much rather be proactive than reactive, you know, when there are concerns and issues. And um, so that's that's what brought me here because uh, there were some um, comments made at the last meeting. And I do want to speak to those because it's it is important to me. But one, I want to celebrate because the truth is we've had 10 extremely successful years of partnership with the town, with the land trust, uh, with over numbers increasing to the point where honestly they they if someone petitioned they could be taken off the endangered list now no one's going to probably do that because it's a lot of work but that's huge success um i want to celebrate that and i want to continue to build on that like that's my ultimate goal but i'm just going to shift for a minute because mindset and words are really important and at the last meeting that when you guys were convening there were some things that were said that were immediately caused my heart to palpitate and bristles to go up and things like well we need to inch towards what other towns are doing we need to we, we got to get armed with the data prepare for battle we've got to oh maybe we can stretch the truth with the data when I hear things like that, when other citizens hear things like that, it, that's what causes mistrust and breakdown in communication on issues like this. I had probably 20 people reach out after your last name, believe it or not, because the it got it's recorded, it got shared, right? And and I'm I know that some of those comments were made in jest. It was like, oh, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Gotta be really careful with those kinds of things, especially with a topic as hot as this one was and would be tomorrow if there were big actions taken <laughs> overnight like like it happened before. Um, and that's again, speaks to that history piece, right? Because people don't know what happened 10 years ago. You know, it was one night without warning, without any, you know, public input or comment, it was a, a town council that, you know, eliminated town-wide year-round all off-leash activity. There was not one single place to take a dog for a walk. Town-wide year-round. It was not a beach issue. It was not, it was the entire town. So we just don't ever want to go through that again. Um, I think we worked very hard to get a compromise in place that again, for all intents and purposes, it's not perfect. And there are still instances happening. And the, the biggest issue is what you were talking to and speaking about is the un things that don't get reported, right? Because like when I look at this, the numbers that Shot Todd just shared, just anecdotally, I mean, Roger, you live at the beach. I go there almost every day now that I have a new puppy. Um, would you say it's fair to say 100 dogs a day visit Higgins Beach? Okay. Yeah. So that might be conservative on the weekends. It might be higher on a you know cold, rainy day, but that's one beach in town. We took 100 dogs times the 36,500 visits. And we only had 36 calls and seven interactions. Like the that's actually pretty dang good. Well, all things considered. But, but one is no one is too many. I don't, right? I don't trust I don't trust that data. Yeah, I mean that's well, coming from the police department. I know, but I didn't call. She didn't Great. call. You didn't I never call. call. Well, that's I what I'm call. saying. Yeah. So and it's it's call. the it's the unreported events that are, yeah. are a problem. Yeah. And then it's also it is lack of enforcement. Um, and I don't blame our PD whatsoever because if there are robberies going on up at, you know, uh, Walmart. the Walmart Plaza um, or issues dealing with elderly and people, I mean, yes, I, I want them to focus their energy. We just don't, if we could hire 10 more police officers, I'd be all for it. Um, but enforcement was an issue 10 years ago and it continues to be an issue today. Um, which is why, you know, I, I do, I, I keep on top of our group. I'm constantly communicating uh, when there are, you know, reminders when the dates are coming up and things are changing. And even today, of course, day after storm, what do people want to do? So three dog owners down there with at two o'clock. And then the rule is from one to three, they have to be on a leash. Three dog owners were off leash. Didn't know, came down to check out the storm. I am so sorry. I, I have no, you know, my group's. I'm pretty, I wouldn't say I have a good constituency at Pine Point, not so much at Ferry. It's a very 
those aren't the, the regulars as much. Um, but Higgins and Fine Point both have, I know at Higgins, a lot of the dog owner group members are also clover monitors and, you know, same at, at Fine Point. And so they're constantly trying to educate. So anyway, those, those were the major things I wanted to address. Um, back to the comment about inching towards what other towns do and why I think this is an important thing to for people to think about is the reason I love Maine, the reason I love Scarborough and I love small town is that we have home, we get to make our own rules for what's best for our town. So while I think it's super important to do an environmental scan and see what other towns are doing, just because they're doing it doesn't necessarily mean it's better. Maybe what we're doing is better than theirs. That would be like telling the people who run our country to say, oh, well, you know, we should go inch towards what China's doing. I don't want the leaders of our country looking and inching towards what China's doing. Now, China might do have some great policies and things that we could learn from and adapt, but I want our leaders to make the decisions that are best for our country. I want our state leaders to make the decisions that are best for our state, because our state's not California. And I want our leaders in Scarborough to make the decisions that are best for our town. So that those are the things that kind of concern me when I when I hear them. Um, it's why I gave up four years of my life and why I blissfully have remained uh, as far away from politics as I as I can uh, outside of you know this. Although I am excited about the community center conversation, and I want to hear that's something I'm pretty passionate about as well. Um, so I would just encourage you to really dive into what Todd was saying, you know, what's the purpose, what's the problem we're trying to solve? And then my preference and approach would obviously be to continue to partner on working on issues around better compliance, education, um, and enforcement. Sorry, I talked a lot. That's right. Thank you, Katie. Appreciate it. I would just say I think we're looking at other towns not as a best as a standard or as best practice just to see if our town is attracting more dogs because of towns around us having more restrictions. We're not looking at them to say we want to do that just for doing it. And you're absolutely right because it, I spoke down at Old Orchard last week or last week last summer when they were having some issues. Dog density is a is a real thing, um, and it is what happens in one town. Could have, you know, that's what if our it population affects. changed yeah. in the last 10 years. Right. right. Yeah. Right. I can tell you back in 2013 better. and 2014, there were roughly, I don't have the new numbers, but there were roughly 1,800 do registered dogs in Scarborough at the time. I have no idea what that yeah. number is now. Um, I can so tell you anecdotally in my, the, like on the Facebook group and the people I interact the most with, um, a lot of them are Scarborough residents, but a lot of them are not. Um, and they're very much aware, you know, I mean, I don't want to put a gate up and keep people out <laughs> because that's, again, for me, mindset, that's not the kind of town I want to have. I want to, you know, be open to sharing our resources with everybody. Um, at the same time, they've got to understand how hard we fought to have this privilege and it is a privilege. I never take it as a, a right or an entitlement. Um, and I want to, you know, continue to maintain that <laughs> um, before we move on Katie, does does anything pop into your mind about what to do about ellen's kids who are terrified just and nobody's ever that. said i'm sorry to yeah me. interesting just, that they say to you it's cool. like and that's and that's absolutely horrible i actually so right now i have a my 22 year old niece is living with me um, and when she was like five or six, she was terrified of dogs. She would not walk into my mom's house because she just, it, she hadn't had a bad incident or anything like that, but she just was one of, you know, there are people hundred percent out there that just, and kids especially that just don't, don't like it. <laughs> um, you know, I, outside of it sounds like you handled it, you know, res as respectfully as you can. And you made the request and you told them. It happens all you know, the time. People come up to us and they say, my dog is friendly. Like, I, I don't, my kids Doesn't are not. Matter. Your dog yes, is friendly. Right. Kids are not. My kids are not. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, I, you know. And yeah. nobody ever has said, I'm sorry. Yeah, and that's horrible. They should. They absolutely should I apologize for that. And that, you know, I mean, that's, I that, I don't have a great answer for that. I wish I did. Um, You know, what I can tell you when you open up the can of worms, if you will, 
the things you would hear is, well, I don't like when kids run by and kick sand in my face. It happens. So are we going to ban dogs and kids from the beach? Are we going to, you know, no. No. <laughs> but I'm just saying, you know, for me, I have, right? <laughs> sometimes I honestly worry that we are living in, a, in an environment where we have so, like, little tolerance for those kinds of things like kids peeing i i've seen when i was on the town council um people were taking pictures of kids and peeing on the rocks and you know saying that we had to do something about it and it was obscene and and child pornography and like you're the child pornography because <laughs> you're taking the picture really? right but you know i i have 24 nieces now i don't have any kids of my own but i have 24 nieces and nephews and i can tell you when your two and three year olds goes i gotta go they mean it. They got to go. I mean, if you can find a nice private little spot behind a rock, I'm okay with that, you know, but, but people in the world are not all tolerant. And uh, I, yeah, I don't think it's a tolerance issue. Yeah. I think these are, I mean, the three instances I was just talking about are not because my kids can't tolerate it. Like they shouldn't be, I mean, my daughter is six. She has scratches from this dog on her arm. It's more than yeah. tolerance. Well, the number one thing is you well, have I to work report. It. Yeah, that's good to know. Yeah, uh, okay. Hundred uh, percent. I will tell you. Regular. If I could give, if I could give out tickets, yeah. I would be happy to that, give out. Well, I'm, I'm not when give... I go to dad or to, to, to Karen on council and on the finance committee and say, "Hey, here's the dad." Every time a, ki a dog the runs numbers up, numbers went me. up seventy-five calls this year, and we haven't done anything about it. How do we? When we're asking for more funds, mm -hmm. that's. That's one. But data when point. do I call? Like every time a dog runs up to me and yeah. the kids freak out, I call the I, I can tell you in in uh one of these binders again. If I have four with me and there's three more at home, uh, there was one uh phone number from Higgins Beach that made 182 phone calls. That was mine. No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't. I, I will tell you. No, no, no. I, I, I was going to say that. I was going to say. What's that? How do you get the it was it was in the ACO data. Yeah, the new system or name. Said. Well, the it, the name. Yeah. Okay, got it. And, and I might have had this person in my phone, so maybe I knew them. Yeah. <laughs> but that was fine in a, in a, in in, so in, in one people. of your binders over there. You said at that project. meeting. Uh, I I, I got to say this because yeah. you said at that meeting that the dog people would help uh, protect the poles, yes. and they would be part of Glenis's. Yes. Do you know how many dog people we had monitoring? Last year, you had two. No, yes. we had zero. So Jim and Maureen Burns are on the beach every single day and have been monitors forever. Robin McLaughlin is a dog owner and lives right on Vesper Street and has been a part of the monitoring No, process. she wasn't on. She, she, she didn't do her... I do know her sister had cancer this summer and she took a big oh. chunk of it off. But yeah, they have we been, have, we they have been a part of it since but, the beginning. But the, your, your dog, so yeah, we're going to have to interrupt yeah. that. We're, we're coming towards the end of our meeting time. Yeah. So um, do we continue this review for next meeting, schedule a new meeting um, so that we can get on with the update and nominations? chair get through that we need to get through the nomination yeah yeah did it is all the data there okay it's all the drive but all the towns are done most of them are we have the most lenient yeah i i feel like we have to come up with something this is an issue um so i don't know whether i mean we've talked about enforcement we've talked about I don't know, maybe the town does nine zillion surveys. Maybe we do a survey because people aren't calling for their, yeah. for their I, I don't know, but I feel like the situation can't stay the way it is because I don't think it's acceptable to anyone. So not that you're asking me, but I think that the, again, it's if people don't, if education obviously is important. If people don't call, you know what I mean, to, to let things know, um, and I think that if you know if if this committee wants to make a recommendation, I think that you know they would, they would need to figure out um, based on what and what's the result and what's the best result because a sign and a rule change is not going to yield the result right now. I, like I said, I think putting the parks rangers on the beaches and having some people to be there to educate 
and enforce if they have to. Because if I go with my dog, and like I said in numerous meetings before, I have a different dog now because my other two passed, but my chocolate lab, I, great voice control. My dachshund, he'd go like this to me, and he was gone. <laughs> so like he had to be on a leash, and she was great. You know, um, so I, I think that ha I think to really change an environment, we need people that are familiar and qualified to educate and also enforce, if need be, uh, on the beach. And that's going to take resources. Um, you know, we have a little bit of that to start with this summer. So I think those are the type of things that I would recommend we try, um, you know, um, prior to looking at restrictions, because I think that you change the rule, people are still going to go out there. They do now. If they're, if they're going to avoid the rules, they're going to do it anyways. But there, we were saying, based on the data we've looked at, is they're drawn to Scarborough because we're the least restrictive. So people in other towns are coming to Scarborough and maybe not following our rules because I don't know why. Maybe we just need to publicize what the rules are as a reminder. I mean, Nobody knows they have to be under voice control. Well, nobody knows what voice control is. I do, I do share it with like, so there are a couple organized groups. They're a little different. Like but Cape has what's called Cape Dogs. Sopo has Sopo Dogs. Uh, Sof, uh, Old Orchard is uh, Pups. And I they do have pages. And I do, from like when I do a, hey, the April 15th date is, you know, coming when the, when the things are changing and I'm trying to do reminders, I do try to, you know, send that out. Um, so I think that's the stuff that's tangible that if you guys can be thinking about, okay, like I said, I, I talked about some broad things, but if there's things that you want us to do or us to work with the Scarborough Dogs Group, you know, posting words, you know, I think we can try to target some of those things to be able to say, we've exhausted all of our resources. So why don't you set an education campaign with a timeline that says, we are going to educate through these many routes to these community, to these neighborhoods for this amount of time mm -hmm. and see what the results are. And at the end, evaluate that and then see if you need to then do more education because it's working well, or if you need to move to restrictions. Uh, one thing that you could do too, because we, I know we talked about it, like when people registered the dog now to make yeah. sure that they're getting that with it, but you've got the addresses for all the registered dogs, so yeah. you can do a mailer um, of no, all of I, that as well. And I'd be happy to sometimes, um, you know, it just it, if I wear this jacket, you know, someone will listen to me a little bit more than if I'm, I mean, believe me, if there have been times when I've confronted a dog owner for not picking up poop or, I mean, I've, I've literally picked up poop and here you go. I know you missed it. I'm sorry. I, you know, I know it was an accident, right? Um, but if I'm, if I don't have this or they don't know me for some reason, you know, there's some that they, you know, they give me the nasty look. <laughs> I, I'm not really ready yet to offer a recommendation or advice, but I'm not ready to drop it either. And I see that there's still a lot of comments that are yet to come forward. So I would like to have a further discussion about this. Our time is short now, so I don't yeah. think we can do it. Katie, I hate to ask you to do this, but I really value your input. And if you could come and join us again, when we can explore some ideas. We just, is it March 14th is your next? Yeah. I, just, I, was, I was also wondering if maybe a combined letter in the leader educating but then that's what that's what Todd and I were talking about. Like if we did a, a, a co-sponsored event, um, but also to do a combined letter in the leader. We've done that with the land trust. Um, and that's been like, you know, so the dog owners raised money and we bought the trash bins for them. We helped work with public works to make sure that, you know, and then got volunteers to try to take those bins out on the nights that they're, you know. Um, so we could absolutely do something like that. Uh, but I think if you're going to do a campaign like of some sort, like you have to view all mediums, like who under the age of 25 reads the newspaper. Yeah, no, it's Twitter, TikTok. Well, we just right, did, but yes. that's not that. Well, we just here, did the so. survey for the community well, survey. Saying, the one of them. Yes. Twitter and Facebook are the two number one things, and 
the town newsletter was right there too. So again, use yeah, multiple yeah. Media. Do you yeah. think people understand what under voice control means nope. as it's written? No. Nope. Like even the people that in your group. I, I think, think even the do. people in the state who wrote the law don't know what it means. <laughs> I mean, that's just well, the, that's just so I think my... that's a perfect. We got to define it. And what will you want it to be in Scarborough, right? So right. that's a big right. change. If we could, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, maybe we could schedule more time. Yeah. Well, this if, will be. Do we want to add this to yes. the March agenda, or we want to do a separate meeting just on dogs? March. 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 <laughs> it's one of our it's one of our goals to be. Right. See, so this is not like we're talking about it. It addresses it. Addresses it in in. Would it make sense for a okay. other shared document to be created for ideas to get put on as far as things to discuss, or are we just going to spitball in March? I mean, we can just add it to the current document and just add a new tab that says dogs. So the documents already document already exists. Yeah. I'll add a new tab that says dogs, and then right. people can add in feedback, or we can take anything from the other. Um, I can also invite. There's two trainers I know that um, have worked hard with people at the state level on definitions for voice control. Um, well, there, I mean, when you look at the Scarborough ordinances, it says your dog is not allowed to approach someone without their consent. You have to do a a, a verbal consent or a hand gesture. So to me, that is not happening at the beaches. So is that that I mean, is that would, unclear to bet, anyone? I would bet nine out of ten dog owners don't know. I, I didn't know that there could be a book. I didn't know the ten foot rule. It's written right in the town. I know, but I just, yeah, I just, but but I mean, but I'm saying people I think understand that once you say it. Well, I think they, they, don't, know it's, they the don't know they're supposed to say, oh, hey, we're ten feet away from you. Can my dog approach you? Right. right. They so don't, let's tell them yeah, this right. way. Yeah. Can can I ask one question? What is what does the when when a dog person goes to register his dog, what does this town give them? A brochure that they throw. And to me, that's what right. the letter should be, and, and the rules should be. And then if they walk out of the place and throw that piece of paper away, those dog persons are negligent, and they're not a true dog lover because <laughs> they don't want to take care of their own dog and the rules that is set up by the, by the town of Scarborough. That's now, true. we can't do anything, or you dog people can't do anything with the people from out of town, but that letter should go to any dog people that have dogs that we do have rules and we they need to be enforced. So yeah. I will commit to doing what I said at the beginning. I will put kind of those activity things Would together you? that we can, yeah. if there's modifications in March, but at least do the outreach that we presently have to try to improve that. So maybe that's what we put on that Google thing is obviously we're landing on education. I agree that we need to keep talking, yeah. but if education is the first start, then maybe we brainstorm ideas on how we communicate and educate. And I'm of the mindset, and I'll use a dog pun to give people a leash. It doesn't work, then you change the rules. Right. That's right. So, That's right. Alex, do you have a quick update or should it wait? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I what we do with the tour since the last meeting. I mean, they're fun. Yeah, so you guys got the packet there. Yeah, I like our that. next meeting yeah. is Tuesday. Um, the step that we're at right now, so you all know, Alex, we, we took a mid-coast tour, all the data's in there, what we learned, what we saw. Mid-coast multiple community centers. Yeah, Food Bay, was Cassie Bath. Wow, oh, great. Great. Half a day on a Saturday. Nice. Seven Good people. Yeah. Saturday. Yeah. And there's Thank nine, you. On, nine on the committee, so we have Alex. the majority. Yeah. Great. Good. Um, Good time. Yeah, and the, so the data's there. Uh, at our Tuesday meeting, quickly, just what they're doing is they're reviewing uh, what we've learned from the shreds we held as far as what people want to see for activities, as well as the information shared from the committee on the tours. Uh, for multiple months now, they've been sharing um, different sizes and shapes and that sort of stuff of how big a pool could be, what, what the meetings are. The goal from this meeting is for them, to, from the ad hoc committee, to be able to tell their, our consultants, hey, you teal, this is the framework we want you to study. We want eight lane pool, they want a splash pad, whatever it is. Two gyms, uh, senior center, or uh, we want a meeting room that's 3,000 square feet that can be divided by three. Pickleball court. That's all, yeah. <laughs> Trust me that we hear that 300 times. <laughs> um, uh, but, but really what's important is, and, and Karen and I were just in a meeting about this topic, is we've never received in this town a complete portfolio to make decisions. What I mean by that is having a center, what it costs to build, 
what it costs to operate, and then what it, the revenue projections are. We've never had them all at the same time because we've never gotten that far in the process. And so I'm fighting really hard. Karen's fighting really hard to keep this alive because there's still the school conversation about what that's going to be. And so you can see this timeline and I'm, I don't know if Alex noticed that we've extended a little bit um, to get a project done in July versus March because we're never going to get it done in March. But it keeps everything theoretically alive until someone tells us, you know, it's not. My goal is to have a shovel ready project. If somebody brings a piece of property or Karen can wave a magic wand and get us property somewhere in a budget, um, we have this ready, get out of the way. Um, but the next part is the most important part because in April, then they plan on having a community activity where everybody can come in and see what's been proposed because, you know, um, I explained today and I wanna do it on the recording so people understand is that, you know, I'll use the eight lane pool. And these numbers are totally fictitious and I'm making them up right now. But let's say it's a $3 million build that you build an eight lane pool and it's $500,000 to operate it, but it makes $400,000 in revenue. Okay. That's a model. If you say, okay, we want less of a build cost because the number's too big and you drop down to six lane pool, your, your, your build only goes down, you know, $500,000. Your, your operation costs maybe go down $50 and your revenue goes down 100. So sometimes it doesn't level out economically. The big hurdle is getting over the build because based on what they're talking about, they're projecting that a building we build could be between 85 and 90% so. That's amazing. So it's the build hurdle. And that's what that's what we're going to have to kind of- What do you mean the build hurdle? Like Getting funding to approve it. The capital start to say, hey, we need $45 million to build this building. You know what I mean? And what is it, you know, where does it go from there? So that's the next step on Tuesday to get the kind of program meaning space design so they can come back with build cost operations and then revenue because that makes it. And then once we get kind of a base there, then they come back and say, okay, Todd, we need four acres. We need five acres. Uh, we've committed to looking at town owned properties first and ones that are being used or one uh, not in use or ones that are being in use and then are better repurposed for it. Just so before we get into talking about having to say, hey, we need to spend a million dollars on a piece of property. Again, made up number. So saying that on video, so people hear me saying it's a made up number. Um, but that's the process, right? We got to get to that point. So sorry, Thank Alex, you. that's the... Good job, Alex. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Alex, I saw your picture in here. That's nice. Evidence that you were there. Yeah, right. Yeah, he's right there. Yeah, he's the tallest guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was changing light bulbs in half the All right. Can I ask just one really quick question? Yeah, sure. It's an interesting model that there's three communities that work together there. Is there any particular reason why? Say, say what? There were three communities. You no. said the mid coast. I because I worked at I worked and done tours and all them, so I have a relationship with those folks. I ran the Wisconsin one for 15 oh, years. Oh, each of those, it's not one no, facility uh, that's no. all those three towns. No, they're all each three separate. Town has one. Oh, okay. three different. One okay, because I had a relation, two, they were all within 25 minutes of each other. Yeah. And three, they all had the same. Um, types of amenities in all different styles. You went to Wisconsin as integrated pool. The other two had separated. One had great viewing deck and the other one had a small gym. One had a walking track, the other one had a field house. So those three showed them every kind of conversational topic to have in a condensed version. Okay. So, yeah. That's that. All right, item nine, quickly, hopefully, if we need to defer, we will. Um, I don't have the notes in front of me. I believe Trish was nominated for president. No, I'm not going to be president. Yeah. Chair, yeah, chair. Same thing, chair. same yes. thing. It's going to be the case. No, yeah. <laughs> for chair. <laughs> Wrong committee. Um, I forgot who was. And I made, I uh, Emily had made mention of uh, chair or vice chair, and I made that that I'm not a nominating person. Uh, yes, yes. She was absent at meeting, so I did that on her behalf. Right. But and again, it's still open to anybody. Yeah. This is the time to nominate. If someone we'll be able to put a ballot together for next meeting. Someone has to nominate someone. Or I, I, think, I think I did. I think I, I nominated. Did. Yes. So Emily. Yeah. 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 But a report. Yeah, I'll nominate Trisha for oh, chair. There we go. I'll and second I, it. Great. Robert's <laughs> rules. That's right. And I'll nominate Emily for vice chair. Yeah, and vote on chair. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. All in favor of Trish for President. Trish for president. <laughs> Can we get right now, I'd vote for you, for president. <laughs> yeah. All 
All right, we have a nomination second family as VP. Oh my gosh. <laughs> VC. VC. Is on that. Yeah. It's after 7 30. He's done. Yeah. yeah. All in favor? No, that's good. Thanks. Uh, anyone want to take on recording secretary? Come on, guys. Yeah. 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 I was going to say, you've done an incredible job. No, but I didn't want it to begin with. <laughs> Reference your, your minutes and notes don't need to be very detailed. Yeah. I mean, it's great that you do that, but everything well, she's important, everything's that's important. what happened with me with Congress. So, it's 20 years. <laughs> yeah. See, so, I'm trying to but it, prevent the 20 year. Oh, I, that's why we love that one. So you could table that nomination. All right, let well, people think about it, and then we can talk yeah. about All right. what that looks Where's like. Where's Amanda? Okay, I nominated him. <laughs> That's that's one of the yeah, that's and who's the person, Patricia? Yeah, right. yeah. And Patricia, we that's, haven't that's met yet. Long, that's a good entree. Yeah, yeah. I, I second that. Did you hear from Patricia Kafka? She yes. reached out to you. Did, yes. okay. Yeah. I mean, she missed the last two meetings uh, and right. hasn't participated yet. So maybe we should she give had, the benefit of the doubt and she had join to be sworn first. in or something. You don't think we should make a recording? Meeting? Secretary, she hasn't attended a meeting yet. Maybe she should want attend one first. Yeah. Because I'm going to come to the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. I will table that till next month. And Trish will have the honors. Congratulations. Thanks, Doctor. Um, it just teed it. Any other anything else? Thank you for staying. And we've so got things we through discussion. Can, wait, so we just confirmed her? Am I am I yeah, both? Both? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then we're <laughs> <laughs> we're tabling recording play. Yes. And we just got to confirm these meeting dates for the record for 2024. We're good there. Mike, Katie, yeah. thank you for showing up. Oh, thank you for having me. And honestly, if, if, if any of you are not like on the dogs page, or if you're on Facebook, definitely join the dogs page. It's a good place to listen in on the conversation. And then also, you can find me because I'm happy to talk anytime. <laughs>